Ready? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm with Mark Miller, and you're here with Discovery Channel, and you also have a radio background. Yeah. You want to share that with us? Yeah, well, I started in a town very similar to this, Cranbrook, in uh, 1987 was my first job. And oh, that's just yesterday. Yeah, it is. It's, you know what? It's That's 25 years ago. And, uh, you know, I just, I can just sort of feel the energy of the community here, and it's very similar to what Cranbrook was like when there was a big community event. Everybody would come out, and I was a radio guy. I was doing what you were doing. And, uh, so I might have a future. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> you're gonna you're you're gonna end up <laughs> more than you are <laughs> now. Owning a bunch of holes. Yeah. Um, no, but it's it's fun. It's really fun to come back here because it's it. You know, the, this is what makes the whole country tick. Communities like this. Yeah, and we, we love being here and just getting to know people and drawing community and social networking people together from all across the country. Yeah. When, how did you invite involved in flight? Uh, when I was a little little guy, when I was like nine years old, I used to go with a guy named Murray. We would go to the airport in Edmonton, the municipal, and we watch airplanes land on the rooftop from the rooftop of the parkade. And we figured out pretty quick that there were two flight schools on the airfield. And we figured out who the chief flight instructors were, and we would watch to see when they would change. And when they would change, we would go in and say, "Hi, I'm 11 years old. I want to learn to fly. Can I do a $25 lesson?" And they would do it. You're only ever allowed to one of those, though, to start your flying career. I mean, by the end of it all, we probably had done, you know. A dozen of those between the two of us and we start flying we're now 14 years old and they're going you guys are naturals you know and it's how nice to be encouraged when we're that young yeah right? yeah and we were naturals because we'd already done six hours of flying you know so so you're a schmoozer from way we back. we were schmoozers from way back that's what probably what made me a good radio guy can you share some of your responsibilities here today sure um, i'm the back of the yeah no i ferry the airplanes around for dave he's our he's our uh, air show pilot i do media rides i take people up and sort of demonstrate um the airplane and, and what some of the things that it can do and and uh, you know quite often people just want to go up and see their community from the air oh it's you know another world so we're you know we take flight to the extreme here and, uh, with aerobatics but it's a lot of people don't even get to fly period mm -hmm. most people haven't even been in a small airplane let alone a small high performance airplane so you know when we pour the coals well, we'll to this thing and, and you see it's rolled down the runway like pour the coals to it yeah like that. yeah yeah. Well, and what a wonderful visual experience that stays with a person for the rest of their life. For sure, for yeah, sure. Absolutely. So um, what else are you doing besides helping out uh, this flight team? So the other thing is I'm involved with the television show. I'm the producer of the Discovery Channel show that's... Uh, well, congratulations. That's a lot of responsibility. It, it is, and it's a really exciting project. It's, it's a lot of responsibility in the sense that, you know, the air show industry in North America is struggling. And we've, we've discussed that, what's going on in the United States and, and how important this Quinella International Sky Fest is, not only to Canada, but to North America and flight aviation shows to come. Yeah, I mean, we really hope that the show um, gets a great following and audience. You know, Discovery Channel has been wonderful to, to give us the platform to air the show. It'll start in March. Um, they are putting a lot of resources behind it. Um, we're the same team that makes the show Highway Through Hell on Discovery Channel, which is very popular. And very popular. We've seen very similar kinds of characters here. Well, you know, the nice thing about Discovery Channel is you've got that wide range of people watching. I know I watch my grandkids and young kids just love to get in, in front of it and see planes, big machines, yeah. all of that kind of thing, right up to my, my grandfather who loves the show just because of all the science that can be involved. That's great. It, well, I'm it, glad. It, it, et cetera. And so. that's one of the things we've tried to do. You know, I got involved with the channel uh, back in 1996, you know, in the very early days, and it was a really neat place to work that um, our goal was to have integrity, to to approach things, to sort of capture the wonder of the world around us. We always used to say, we're looking for the little discovery and the big discoveries, nice. you know, and every, you know, sometimes just explaining to a kid, there's flaps, here's what it does to a wing, here's how it helps you fly an airplane. So when they go on a commercial airplane, it has the same things. They start to understand the physics and, and asking questions. You know, we, we really want people just to be curious. Ask questions, get excited about the world around you. And when you get excited about the world around you, you start to care more about the world around you. Absolutely. It's right. a grand philosophy and it's so true. And to capture people of all ages, like Discovery Channel does, yeah. is a wonderful mission that you guys have started. Yeah. And you know, you're almost on your 20 year anniversary then, right? So when this yeah. program airs, you'll have a couple of years wow, left. Oh, that's right. 20 year anniversary. Okay, now you didn't need to tell me that part. <laughs> that, well, I think that's a milestone for you too. And a credit to what you've started and gotten involved in, that it is so successful. And so many people look forward to shows like this that are coming up. You know, when they start to be advertised, my wife, well, when's this one going to come out? When's this one going to start? <laughs> so yeah. this will be another one that so many people, generations, will look at and want to see, especially with the difficulties that aviation is facing when it comes to sure. flight shows and things of that nature. For sure. Well, thank you for taking on so much responsibility here in our 
community, Quinnell, and being a part of Scott well, thank, Fest, and we're thrilled to have you Yeah, and thank you guys for coming out, and I hope everybody comes and watches the shows, and, you know, come by the pits and ask questions. The, all of the people here, Melissa, Dave, you know, Kent, they're all really accessible, just everyday guys. They, they're people. Great to meet you. Thank you very much. And, nice uh, to meet you guys. Have a safe uh, weekend. We will. Thank okay. you very much. Look forward to the nice show. Nice to meet you guys. So Chris, where are we today? Windsock, Mark. We are listening to the snowbirds. We are. <laughs> As Canadians, we like to lay back, watch the birds fly by, don't we? And that's right, and we're doing it at Cornell Skyfest 2013 right here at the Cornell International Airport. CF-18 is here. The snowbirds just did their routine. Lots more to come. We're just having a blast. Discovery Channel here. Discovery Channel's here. Thanks to our sponsors. We're going to give you all we can this weekend. Oh, absolutely. Head to Cornell right now and get to the Cornell International Air Show.